just want to demonstrate uh, what singe is. Got these two beavers here. And, uh, see, one is singed and one isn't. You see the one on the right, how the fur looks like uh, kind of specular, it's kind of speckled. That fur is singed. See, it reflects light differently. See the one on the left reflects light, but it does it you know, just as a sheen. Well, this one here, along the edges there, that's, that's because each hair picture of it. Um, each hair is curled at the tips. So it just reflects light differently. And right here, um, that would be the belly side. That's the first place to singe. But singe can go all the way up into here. I've never really seen them singe down the middle. You'd probably have to really do something wrong. I could see even on this, this side here is singed too, not quite as bad, but you can see how those hairs have a curl to them. So anyway, that's how you recognize singe in, in a beaver, same way with otter. So which animals singe? Um, it comes to trap and it's really your water animals that singe. Um, uh, land animals like uh, coon, uh, coyote, fox, they don't really singe. Um, it's, it's mostly otter, which are the most susceptible, beaver, and mink. Uh, muskrat can singe, but they're not really susceptible to it. It's not usually an issue. Um, land animals like coon, uh, fox, coyote, it's not an issue with them. Any hair can singe. I get my arm too close to a fire and the hair is going to singe. I'm going to, you wipe it and it's going to break and fall off because it takes so much heat with a land animal that it's actually burning it more than singeing it. With a water animal, it takes very little to singe it really and um, it, it just curls the tips like I showed earlier. Um, it doesn't break and fall off. So, uh, there's two types of singe. Um, you have naturally occurring singe and you have trapper cause singe. So naturally occurring singe. Um, naturally occurring singe is just wear and tear on their fur really. Um, I've noticed uh, years where we have snow cover from early in the year to late in the year you have snow cover singe usually occurs later in the year and it's not as bad. Um, where years where it's real cold, everything's fr frozen up and there's ice, you know, ice in the rocks, the lakes frozen, um, singe tends to occur sooner in the year than it does with snow covered years. I believe it's just uh, they come out of the water and they're on the ice, they're in the water on the ice uh, I think the ice uh, causes singe uh, quicker than going in the water and coming out onto snow. I think the snow is just a little easier on the fur. So uh, a naturally occurring singe you usually have to start looking for in most years uh, February. Sometimes, you know, the end of December I've found it. but. Uh, usually you get into mid-February and you're going to start seeing singe on your uh, otter and maybe a little later into February on beaver. You get into March and your otter, beaver are going to be singed and your mink are going to be singed, which they call springy. Now with mink, um, uh, they call it springy because it's not, they don't singe quite the same as uh, as otter and beaver. Otter and beaver, it's right at the tip of the hair that curls over more. Uh, where mink, it's more of a, a arching of the, the hair. It just gets that arch to it. Um, you'll see it particularly in the tail on your later caught mink. And like I said, they call it springy. But it's, it's singe. It's just uh, 
it doesn't occur at the tip and it doesn't reflect light differently as it does with otter and, and uh, beaver. The other type of singe is a trapper cause singe and that's uh, just during the fur handling uh, things that you do after you harvest the animal that uh, could have caused it to singe. Um, things you want to avoid well, with otter and beaver, try and keep that fur wet. Um, you want to avoid uh, hot air. Don't bring it in your vehicle and, and have the hot air blowing on it. Um, and you also have to avoid radiant heat, uh, like a wood stove. Um, in my shed here, I have a wood stove. I'll, I'll put a piece of cardboard that uh, blocks the radiant heat over on this side of the shed where I'm, I'm fleshing. Uh, just the ambient heat that's in the air doesn't cause singe. Um, it's that radiant heat uh, that, you know, if you can feel it against your skin, that's radiant heat. You know, even the sunshine is radiant heat. Um, so try and keep them uh, as they're drying, like I put my my beaver up on hoops. Um, I want to keep it away from my heat source um, so that they don't singe. Um, let's see, another, another thing is um, uh, a quick temperature change can cause singe. I found that out this year actually. I'm out here in the shed, I put my beaver up on a hoop, I looked at her, there's no singe. It's about 75 degrees here in the shed. It was minus 15 outside. It was minus 25 with a wind chill. So, just bringing that beaver from my warm shed 100 yards to my house, um, that 90 degree temperature change actually caused a little bit of singe in, in the beaver. So, uh, what I did after that is I, I let the fire go out and, and let it cool off in here, get down to 40 degrees before I bring the beaver inside. Um, that's, <laughs> you wouldn't think that would do it, but it actually did. Um, the other thing is, uh, once the hair is dry, you don't want to do any combing. Uh, you want to comb your fur, you know, your otter and beaver, you want to comb them before you flush them, uh, but you should do it when they're wet. You know, If they're not wet, spray it with a little water, comb it and then flush it, <clears throat> and then uh, once the beaver's on the hoop, um, if it's usually still a little wet, if not I'll put a little water on it and I'll give it a little, couple strokes, just comb the hair down, that's it. Once it's dry, you don't want to do no combing or it will singe the hair. Um, see, the other thing, uh, the other way I've singed fur after I've harvested it was uh, uh, getting a picture. At the end of the year, I like to put it up on a fence, on a barn, get a picture of it. You should always do it on, a, on an overcast day. Um, do that on a real sunny day. Uh, I did this one year. It was March and it was midday. It was real sunny and warm out. <clears throat> and I hung it all up on the barn. I noticed when I was bringing it in that uh, it had gotten singed. Not real bad, but it got some singe just from being up on that barn, that sunlight beaming on it. Um, so those are some things you want to avoid. Uh, I think that about covers it. So uh, naturally occurring singe, you can avoid it by getting your fur when it's prime, you know, before it's past prime and starts to naturally occur. And uh, uh, you can avoid it when you're handling it by keeping that fur wet. Um, not combing it when it's dry and, uh, and storing it, you know, out of direct heat. Oh, one other thing is um, once the fur is tanned, it's not really susceptible to, to singe. I mean, you get it too close to a fire fireplace or something, it's, it's going to singe, just like any hair would. But um, it's it's not as likely to singe once it's been tanned for some reason. 
um, like this fur behind me here is, is uh, tanned. Um, now, I'll sell beavers that are hooped, and I'll tell people not to put it in direct sunlight. But that's because direct sunlight will bleach it out. Uh, you know, a nice dark beaver will end up being blonde. Um, I gave one to a store and had it in the front window, and I told him, you know, all summer long, sitting in that sunlight, because it was a south-facing window, I said, that beaver's going to end up being a blind beaver. So, um, if you hoop beaver and sell them, it's something you should let them know. But, uh, that about covers it.